There is a place in Turkey located between a great mountain and blue, blue sea. A city that is home to the most famous Turkish food. A place where the history of Turkey as a huge country began. Welcome to Bursa! Hey guys, sorry for those first clips over there. It was super early in the morning and I guess instead of those sleepy heads, I'm gonna do the intro myself. It's early in the morning, I'll talk later. As you probably figured, this video today is gonna be about Bursa and we're actually gonna tell you one of the biggest secrets that Turkish nation has. The secret is about their food and they're actually known for it all over the world. Don't tell the secret. And of course, we're gonna tell you a bit more about city of Bursa and what makes it so special amongst the locals. And since you're traveling with us, we're not gonna do it the touristic way. And for this, we have a plan. Since Bursa is not a huge tourist destination, at least for foreigners, then we thought that the best thing to do first would probably to meet up with a local who would actually tell us what are the best places to see in here. Of course, once again, we had no idea who were the strangers that we were gonna meet. And the place we're gonna meet is a bakery. Our two new friends were called Fatih and Evren, and the place they brought us was a heaven if you are a fan of pastries. It was oddly beautiful seeing how the pastry was cut into bite-sized pieces. Both me and Lizu ordered a mixed plate of burek. It had cheese, spinach, meat. It was so filling and delicious. After getting to know our Turkish friends, they decided that instead of telling us where to go, Evren and Fatih are gonna show us some of the amazing places that locals enjoy the most in this city. Yeah, Starbucks was not it. Just once again a show of Turkish hospitality. And finally we were on our way to see the non-touristic side of Bursa. A place that was one of the most favorite areas of our new friends. Wait, guys, I just realized that I'm already telling you about the special local places of this city, but I haven't even told you about Bursa itself. So I think I should actually start by telling you about the city and then in the end we will talk about the local places as a cherry on top. The first thing we noticed while discovering the city ourselves was the greenery. Although Bursa has over 3 million inhabitants, the city felt calm. After spending a week in Istanbul, it really was a relief to get away from the crowds. Secondly, it was hard not to miss the constant signs about one of Turkey's most iconic food. What's the one thing you want to do in Bursa? I want to eat my favorite Turkish food. Soon, soon. As we got closer to the town center, the atmosphere suddenly changed. It was still green, but the buildings in the center were much older. For Turkish people, Bursa holds quite important historic uh, value because this city here was actually the first capital of Ottoman Empire in the 14th century. It's always interesting to be in such historically important cities. Ottomans played a huge role in world history. They connected Europe and Asia and thanks to the shared trade and knowledge of those times, humanity itself did a huge leap moving from dark ages to renaissance and in some way it all started from this city. Another example of Bursa being the link between Europe and Asia is that it was one of the westernmost cities of the Silk Road. And to this day, whole market is dedicated to silk. It's a nice and cozy place, full of silk in all colors and sizes. As this fancy material is not really our thing, we just had a walk in the area. And a thing that surprised us, compared to Istanbul, <laughs> the salespeople are half as pushy. They barely look at us. And it would be much more pleasant to shop in here, since there is not as much pressure to buy. 
After the market, I could see that Lizu was getting hungry. To distract her, I tried jokes. The bridge we are on seems a little big for this river. They didn't work. I thought that maybe some beautiful Ottoman architecture might distract her. We've made it to one of the most important landmarks in Bursa, Ulu Jami, the Great Mosque. Well, this seemed to work for a while. And what makes this mosque special is that it has 20 domes that are held up by 12 huge pillars, elephant legs like this. And the middle dome is made of glass, under it a beautiful fountain. When we left, her hunger was back. So I tried everything. Chicken, some random kebab place where they didn't even cook it with live fire. They have cold baklava. Even desserts did not stop her thinking about her favorite Turkish meal. I promised her that one more landmark and then we can go. Time to gear up. This one here is the Green Mosque, and it's famous, quite similar to the Blue Mosque in Istanbul, thanks to the green tiles that are in, in the mosque. In the Green Mosque, there was no peace and quiet like we had experienced in the Grand Mosque. Yes, it was pretty. But thanks to the tourist hordes, visiting the mosque felt more like a art show than a peaceful and a quiet holy place. It feels a little like fencing in here, trying to touch all the selfie sticks. Sultan's tomb next to the mosque was pretty much the same. I had no more excuses left. Now, it was finally time to give Lizu what she desired most. Can you get that food now, please? As we were getting closer, the aroma of the kebab filled the air. Huh? We had made it. It was finally time to reveal the secret about Turkish food. Since we're gonna eat Lizu's favorite food, we figured we're gonna do it in a place that invented it. About 150 years ago, a man called Iskender Effendi realized that if he grilled meat vertically instead of horizontally like it was normal, the end result would be much juicier and more full of taste. The restaurant was cozy and had a historic feel. As you can see, the pictures on a wall were quite old. Back in those days, this look still wasn't ruined by one man. It's funny to think that I'm probably standing next to one of the most famous pieces of meat in the world. It's amazing to see Turkish cooks work. Just like in a bakery, there is a sense of pride and precision in their movements. And then our meal arrived. So what does it consist of? It's, it's not a regular meat dish. Meat on the top, then there is bread, and beneath it, yogurt, which is like a little bit like sour cream, and then there's a melted butter sauce. You could hear how the butter was sizzling on right there. <laughs> it was delicious filling and eating it in a place where it was invented just felt right. It's honestly quite hard to even talk about the kebab because now I feel the saliva coming in my mouth. I'm drooling. It's really cool how every part of uh, Turkey has its own special food and so if you're traveling around the cuisine always changes. But now that you know more about what makes Bursa as a city special, let's go back and talk a little bit more about the special places 
that makes locals fall in love with it. After a coffee with Fatih and Evren, we jump back in a car and... And more sp specifically, this part is called Guzel Yale. Yes, <laughs> I got it right. <laughs> in English, the name translates into beautiful houses. Well, the houses were beautiful and the view even better. I never really knew that Pursa also had beach and seaside. I just knew about the mountain on the other end of the city. The breeze from the sea lowered the temperature. We had lemonade together while learning about Turkish ways. As we were leaving, we saw some weird berries sold. And when we asked our new friends about it, of course they bought the bag for us to try. It's really hard not to like the kindness of this country. After the seaside, our guides told us that there was one more place they would like to show us that many locals love. And of course, on a way, I think Evren and Fatih are just spoiling us. We're taking another break. Yeah. I do feel taken care of. <laughs> we made another stop. A very delicious stop. Guys, if you have any recommendation how to respond to such hospitality, then just let us know in the comments. How can we say thank you back to the local Turkish people? As we got back to the car, our bellies were full. And I was afraid that by the end of our Turkish adventure, we will probably be fat. When we arrived to the last stop on our journey, it felt more like a small village than a part of a huge city. Locals were selling fresh produce on the side of the streets and many people from Pursa came here to escape the hustle and bustle of the city. Suddenly, we got to a bridge and realized what makes Gölyaze even more unique. It's like an island in a lake, a place that mixes Greek and Turkish history. We felt privileged to be able to see such parts of this region that make locals glad to be living here. And in the evening we were just thankful to have once again experienced such kindness from local Turkish people. Friends, that was our adventure in Bursa. And once again I want to say thank you to Fatih and Evren for showing us the local side of this place. I really hope that you're enjoying traveling with us to the fourth biggest city in Turkey. And next time we're gonna continue our journey in what some call the Turkish city of love. And we're gonna see if Lizu can forgive me for taking her to Burger King on our anniversary. Until then, you can go ahead and check out this playlist here to see all of our Turkish videos and we will see you next time. Bye!